So these first three items that I sold uh, all went to the same buyer. So that's so lovely. Somebody comes in and just kind of shop, uh, shops through your shop. Um, it's all shirts. Anyway, these are the items I'm about to show you are the items that sold in our online shops um, from the week of December 11th through the 17th. Hey everybody, how are you guys doing? I am a little under the weather. I'm having a bit of a lion, as they say, across the pond, I think. <laughs> um, anyway, so, but I just wanted to, this is something easy I can, I can record and talk about while I'm hanging out here. Um, so anyway, this is a smart wool. It's a good brand to flip for resale. Um, this one just sold for $25. We do pick up smart wool in different conditions. We've even sold some smart wool that if it's kind of like a base layer or something, even if it had defects, it'll still sell. This one was only $25. I think, you know, prices might not be as high as they had been in years past, but still a solid brand um, to flip if you can get it for a good price. So the same buyer bought that shirt for 25. They bought this shirt for 35. And then, so they had bought these two together and then I guess went back to the store and looked around again and paid separately for this shirt for another $35. They didn't ask for any discount. They didn't ask for any kind of um, they didn't make any kind of offer. It was just full price. So we were able to combine the listings into one package. And I told them ahead of time we were going to do that just in case there was a certain reason we shouldn't. And um, they ended up, um, yeah, they I we did it. And then they answered like a couple days later and said, oh, that would be great. So we got it into one package and I refunded the difference in the shipping. It was mostly like refunding the shipping on one shirt and that covered um, all three. So that worked out. So this is a Levi's. Um, it's a striped, it's like a work shirt. I can get a little bit closer. It's kind of like that canvas uh, type or denim kind of type material. Um, but they call that hickory stripe. Just FYI, kind of like a railroad stripe that you could also think think about but it was made in Hong Kong so it was vintage and then the second shirt we sold it was a Cabela it's just a vintage Cabela as you can see the label there this is the older Cabela's label uh, made in the USA was the other giveaway on that so that was a nice little sale to start our week Deneen Pottery I've talked about Deneen before a couple weeks ago I sold or last week maybe before this I had sold a National Park won an Olympic National Park that sold for about 50. Now this one I kind of hesitated and I'll talk about that in a second. So Deneen Pottery, a lot of companies will commission Deneen Pottery to make um, you know, like advertising mugs for their little businesses and it's big companies and little tiny businesses. So I'm still like, I, I think I mentioned that time that Deneen Pottery was on my bolo list for, I think even in the mug videos that I talked about, um, maybe in connection with Death Wish, like Death Wish coffee, those mugs can be crazy high and they will sell for, you know, the Deneen Pottery ones, you know, they can sell really, really well. Um, so I hadn't really found Deneen Pottery before. Then I finally found that Olympic National Park one. And then I found this one. And I just thought, I don't know. I just kind of took a chance on it. It's it's a little town near me called Libby, Montana. Um, it's a Burger Express place, but it's also an espresso stand. It was from 2016. And I was like, I don't know who's going to want this, but maybe somebody will. Somebody from that area. And sure enough, it sold for $20.00 paid 99 cents at Goodwill and um, the buyer was like in like Virginia or something like that. So it wasn't even, you know, it wasn't even Montana. So I don't know if there's just Deneen Pottery collectors or, or what. So that was kind of my test one. Now I did pass up another one, which now I'm regretting. Like once this sold, I said, oh, I should have bought, I should have bought it. It was another one, like I said, I found like three in a row very quickly. And that one was like some little place in Florida. And I'm like, oh, I should have gotten that. 
Now, I did see some Deneen pottery mugs the other day at our little bins outlet store and I didn't get it again, even though it would have cost me hardly anything. What made me hesitate was, and it, it was an insurance company and then it was a guy and his phone number. And I'm like, okay, I don't know. That's just like too random for my taste, but I don't know. Leave me a comment, comment down below. If you think the Deneen pottery mug with a guy's phone number would sell <laughs> or not. I don't know. Just like an insurance salesman and not maybe even a big company. Like if it had just been the insurance company, I would have been all over that. And I would have, I would have brought it home. Anywho. Okay. Next up. Okay. So remember my playing card video was a while back, but, um, I'll link it at the end of this video in case you want to check that out. Um, so this company, I, I even mentioned this brand in my video, Nintendo. Okay. So Nintendo, same Nintendo, this was, they were doing cards and games before they got into electronic games. And as you can see, we have a Japan Airlines. I vaguely remember picking this up at the thrift, but I was like, oh, it's Airlines. It's sealed. It's by a Nintendo. I think I knew that. I wasn't sure. Maybe that's something I discovered after I got home, but I mostly got it. It was sealed because it had the tax stamp still on it, which was, if you recall, a, a sign of a vintage playing card because they did away with the playing card tax in the mid 60s. So this is definitely from before that. So I just thought that was really cool. It took a while to sell. It was not a fast seller and it sold for $28.99. This, if I haven't mentioned it before, and I should have gotten some of these things listed probably back November-ish or whatever, this is a good time of year to sell cookie presses. Um, they sell for more this time of year, so I do kind of pick them up throughout the year. But then I pick them up and then I'm not super organized, and so I didn't like, oh, it's getting to be fall and winter, I better get the cookie presses listed. Now, in all fairness, this one had been listed on Ruby Lane. We just, it's just so cool. And I just think it wasn't getting enough um, exposure on Ruby Lane. And I was kind of tired of seeing it down in my eBay room. And so we pulled it out. I said, Mr. Pishposh, do you mind just throwing that on eBay? And it like sold really, really fast. So good time of year for it. Uh, $30. I just loved the box. Uh, that it came in the fact that it was you know original in the original box and everything like that so super cute $30 for that I'm not surprised next up is one of my favorite kinds of sales this came from our little bins outlet store and it was totally kind of random there was I assumed it was some kind of like resort or a place in uh, Scottsdale Arizona and I hadn't, it says how the West was fun. And so I just was like, you know, I'm not sure what this place is, but it's going to cost me pennies. It's not chipped. Let me just try it. It's a, it's a mug basically. It doesn't, you know, it's not coffee mug shaped or anything, but it's a mug. Mr. Pishposh threw the word vase in there too. That's fine. So I looked it up later and I think it turns out it was like an attraction, but it was like an old town, old west kind of town that you could kind of walk through or something like that. And the only thing on eBay was um, like postcards and things like that. So there was just ephemera. And so we just threw a number out there and... I'm supposed to be looking at these prices, $28.99. Yeah, everything was the same. And so um, we just threw a price because we didn't even know where to go with it, but we added best offer and we got an offer for about half, $25. And we were like, that's fine with me. Just move it on, you know, sounds good. And it only took a few days. So that was great. Codette wool, Codette, Codette. Um, Mr. Pishposh picked up this vest, I think on a Goodwill trip recently. And we hesitated because we had a cadet shirt that took a really long time to sell. And we thought 
would sell a lot faster. It was camo and it just took forever. And we finally dropped our price enough and it sold. But, and then this one was a vest. It was very cool looking. Um, but it was personalized with this Canadian uh, wood company and had a big logo. And so, but we decided to go for it. Uh, it Mr. Pishbosh got it listed and it sold fairly quickly for $30. Now here's our Franklin Covey planner that I talked about in my video recently, my last video about things to try to focus on selling or listing this week from your profit piles. Um, as you can see, we uh, make mistakes. <laughs> Mr. Pishbosh, sometimes when you're doing stuff on your phone, it's it's kind of hard to tell what picture should be first, but um, he used the backside of it as the main photo, but it didn't matter. It still sold for $40, and as you can see, it was just a like six-string organizer. It had some pages and some things in it, but you know it wasn't completely full. People like to put their own stuff in it anyway. Next up is this little folding uh, like travel chess set and I picked this up at the thrift store. You know, it was just super cute, this little, um, little travel chess set and I had counted the pieces. I knew all the pieces were there. That was important. I paid a couple dollars and uh, we got $35 for that. I'm like, that's really cool. Not any specific brand or anything. Next up is this uh, baseball hat. And again, it's the company R.L. Winston Rod Company. And we showed this, Mr. Pishbosh and I showed this in a uh, haul video, the one we did together not long ago. Um, we didn't show this, but he had found two R.L. Winston Rod Company hats and a sweatshirt. And I think I showed you maybe last week in the What Solds, like both the hat sold very quickly. Sweatshirt has still not sold. I went back to Goodwill like a few days later and happened upon this one. So I went ahead and grabbed that. And then this one sold very quickly for $30. So we are definitely, I think it's kind of a local, you know, not far from here, maybe Wyoming or I don't know, someplace like that. So we are definitely going to keep our eyes open for this for this brand, especially in hats uh, going forward. It could have all been one person just had three hats, donated them, and we'll never find it again, but you never know. <laughs> Fly fishing company type stuff can be can be good anyway. And here's another, this is a nice little surprising sale. Um, another bins outlet item that Mr. Pishposh picked up one day. Um, some hot rollers and curlers are worth really good money. I have one I think will be in the next What Sold video. Um, and then some are worth like $20 and they're not worth the whole like packaging up and everything. But he just picked these up. We tend to pick things up at the bins or outlet because it's super cheap that we might not otherwise. And he sold these for $50. So that was a really good, a good deal. I Maybe this is a, a harder one to find or there's something that people like for this one, but Hot Tools Pro Hair Setter sold for 50 so that kind of surprised me. This next one is a slide rule. I can't remember if we were talking about slide rules before, but our policy is that so some can be worth a lot and some can be worth not much at all. If the thrift store is asking a lot. I try to always look up the model and see if it's worth it. If it's only a couple dollars, like at a yard sale or an estate sale or something like that, then I usually just buy them. And then we do the research and figure it out from there. I think Mr. Pitchpash picked this one up because on our road trip, um, I know he picked up a couple things like that at a certain store that we went to in Washington. But this was a nice one. This one sold for $60 and it went internationally. And then just an industrial gray metal index business card recipe file box type thing. I don't know. We we used to pick these up a lot. So I don't know if this got picked up 
if this was something that was just banging around in our um, stuff or if if we picked this up recently, I'm not sure. It just sold for $25 plus shipping. This was fun. You know, I'm starting to think that I should have started keeping better records of stuff that I found at the bins outlet place and how much money we've made off of those things. I don't know. Maybe I could do that like for a month or something like that and just see how much money we actually make from that place. And I, you know, I find myself saying, oh, we got this at the bins. We got this at the bins. And, you know, I, yeah. So like, that's the only place we should be shopping <laughs> really. Anyway, it's so it's just, you know, I like shopping there. It's just really tiny. It is very hit or miss. You could go multiple days, you know, and just kind of see stuff as they're putting it out. Um, but it's not like the most pleasant place to shop, but it's kind of fun. Anyway, I remember the day it was sitting, this thing was sitting in the kitchen stuff and I love red. So I grabbed it and I looked at it and I saw made in the USA on the bottom. And then we got home and I looked up the company. It's called InterDesign, and it's just like this swivel little thing. Now, some had sold up closer, some different colors had sold closer up into like the hundred, like hundred dollars or so. I couldn't believe it. Um, we had it on Etsy. We had it on eBay. It was like not getting a whole lot of attention, which I thought was interesting because I would have thought the red would be good, but maybe not. And finally it sold for $70. So it was just fun. Like we, um, you know. It's just those things that, you know, not everybody might like take a second look at, but my, my years on Etsy just kind of have honed my eye to look for this kind of fun vintage stuff. And I would have expected it to sell on Etsy. I think we still had it at a higher price on Etsy. So that might've had something to do with it. This is not really a bolo. These only sold for $22. The only reason I think we had them was um, Mr. Pishposh about a year ago was kind of, he's kind of interested in that whole idea of retail arbitrage. And we were in, uh, I don't know, we were sick. We were doing something. We had been in some of the local pharmacies and this was after the holidays and a lot of the toys and things were marked down quite a bit. So he picked up some toys and some squishmallows, things like that. We did okay with them. You know, a uh, retail arbitrage isn't always like about like big profits. A lot of times it's maybe about selling multiples and easy fast listings because the items are new. So he just wanted to get rid of these. These had been like for sale in different places, Mercari and everything for for a year. It it didn't turn out to be the greatest. I, I think we still made a little bit of profit, but nothing ex super exciting. And we were happy to move those on for 22. Then this Territory Ahead flannel shirt. I like the colors of this. Um, it sold for $18.99. Not a whole lot of interest in it. Um, Territory Ahead is one of those brands that I like really like and I've had success with some things. So then I feel like, like everything should sell really well, but it's not true. So it's probably like a lot of brands, the more substantial pieces. I think I sold a sport coat one time for a good price and I don't know this, I just thought would do better, but it's okay. $19 for that coffee mug, vintage coffee mug. Um, one of the reasons we picked this one up is if you look at the top, it's technically a mustache mug. And those always seem to do well, no matter who makes them or, you know, the theme or anything like that. So $17 for that. Then this one sold for $18.99 full asking price. That one was actually an international sale as well. Warehouser is a um, lumber company, you know, it's here in Montana, but it was also in Washington as well. And Mr. Pishposh's, I think his grandfather worked for them back in the day. Hatchet Ranch, Buffalo Valley, Wyoming, made in Taiwan. So another vintage hat sold for $29, $28.99. 
again a bins outlet find because that's where we get most of our most of our hats here is a little uh, discontinued item flip these I picked up on our road trip back in June and um, I think I paid at least I paid at least three dollars a piece I might have had a coupon and um, I had two lots of these the other one was a different size I think and those got lotted up and those sold pretty quickly and this had two different sizes in it like large and small and I think at another yard sale this summer I picked up like a medium or something just by itself so when I was shipping these I just threw that in I paid 25 cents at a yard sale and so I just threw that in the lot and um, $75 free shipping for these zip and steam ziploc i think the there was a short period of time when these had been discontinued and they were selling super fast if you could find them and for much higher profit but i am glad that um, somebody still was looking out for these so like i said a lot of the cookie press type things will sell this time of year um I picked this one up I think not that long ago I always like to look at them in the thrift store and make sure they have all the little discs and tips and things that they're supposed to have this one I believe might if it had been used it was cleaned really well and that one sold for $35 and I picked this up for Mr. Pishposh one day at a thrift store it was only three dollars and He's kind of trained me that vintage Sears Craftsman things can be really good. This was a torque wrench. Um, it actually sold with an offer for $26.24. Patagonia, a coat I picked up one day. This could have done a little bit better, but it did have some staining that or discoloration, I guess, that um, you know we didn't notice in the store. And it's Patagonia. But it's like a work coat material, kind of like a Carhartt material. And so that sold for $40. We took an offer on that. So it was a good week on eBay. Um, some of the other sites were just were kind of slow. But um, uh, yeah, we didn't do too bad on eBay that week. Steve Madden. Uh, these, I, it's so interesting that these sandals sold fairly quickly, you know, and not a super high price, $22.49. We sent a 10% offer and that's, somebody accepted it. I had bought these like for Posh or Depop because they're very 90s, very Y2K. And um, I didn't even get a chance to cross post them. They sold fairly quickly on eBay. So anyway. Uh, Steve Madden is very interesting. They put the name of their shoe right on the inside, so that's awesome. And yeah, so they sat on my shelf for a little while because the soles needed cleaning. And then Mr. Pishposh decided to help me clean up some inventory. <laughs> and he just was on a shoe listing mode, so he grabbed them, cleaned them real quick, and got them listed. So thank goodness for Mr. Pishposh. Now this is a pair of boots. The brand is Oil Lily and it had been a while since I found anything by that brand. I had not, um, I was just seeing if you can see it. It's hard to see it. They have like a little triangle logo down here, Oil Lily. Um, but super cute little patchwork. It's not my best picture. I'm not like super happy with it. But anyway, a little patchwork design, pair of boots, very, very interesting, very quirky. They're kind of Oil Lily and Hannah Anderson, kind of, I lump them together in my mind. And those sold for $60. And here's yarn. I meant to look up, look this up or uh, kind of review. But anyway, I had talked about this yarn in one of my haul videos. And I took the suggestions of some of you guys for pricing. This is boucle yarn. And um, I decided to go for approximately $5 a skein. And it sold. So $40. Took a few months, but the buyer paid uh, $40 for that. And I had gotten it in a bag. 
right? <laughs> Do you guys remember? <laughs> I got it at a bag at the thrift store. It was like $2 for the bag or something like that, 2 or $3, or that was after a half price or something. But I had done this deep dive into the research of the company, and I found out like this Utopia brand yarn was really, really old. You know, it wasn't a company that was in business anymore. It had probably gotten bought up by one of the bigger yarn companies. And so I think all the information I was finding, um, again, was ephemera. It was like postcards uh, advertising this brand. And the postcards were all from like 1910, 1920, like that time. Okay. So kind of interesting. So the last one on eBay that week was some hardware, vintage hardware by Amarok. The pattern or the style of these are called carriage house pretty popular we sold these for $25 for all three so that was it for ebay let's pop over to ruby lane these next two go together to the same buyer this sun brooch was by jerry's and the same buyer also bought these sarah coventry earrings these earrings were clip-on and they were huge i don't know they were like let me see if I say, mm. uh -huh, like just under two inches across. Okay. You can kind of see in this picture how big they were, big old clip earrings. And, um, so the buyer has bought from me before. And so I have it set up to do a 10% uh, discount for repeat buyers on Ruby Lane. So these sold for 15 that sold for 12 so that was a nice little sale and then look at this cute little little girl swimsuit I picked this up at an estate sale but the brand was Catalina which is a good brand to look out for for vintage swimwear and um, anyway it was just a little girl's like size three I just thought it was stinking cute but anyway, it had a couple condition issues. I sold it for $25. Sold these clip-on earrings for $15. They were by Park Lane, and it's called Articulated when, when a piece of jewelry moves like this. You'll see it on pendants or on earrings. And like, like it's jointed, right? And I sold these little salt and pepper shakers. Not a big sale, just $10. They're a little painted cast iron. Uh, salt and peppers and then this was a nice sale this this I paid up for at the thrift store it was like probably 25 to 30 dollars is what I paid for it I'm the 25 is ringing a bell and um, they're just marked let's see I knew they were Chinese export let me see what it says I think it just says sterling like it just says 925 and maybe the earrings just say silver. So that was that's kind of my uh, something I had filed away in the past about if it just says silver, it can it's from China and it's a Chinese export, like from a specific time. Um, I could see the stone had flecks of gold in it, and so it told me that was lapis. And so I had it listed a little bit higher. The buyer asked if I would take an offer and I would. And so I sold those that little set for $80. Hopping over to Etsy, we have this uh, little creamer or pitcher. The brand is Laufer. I'll show you the bottom. Pictures take forever to load especially when I'm doing this. So Laufer, L-A-U-F-F-E-R. Their stoneware stuff, I've never had a problem selling. I actually use Laufer dinner plates and salad plates as our everyday. They're like solid, hard, hard to break with two boys in the house. And um, they, I've sold mugs and I think creamer and sugar maybe another time, but they always seem to sell. So this little creamer sold for 15 this pair of gla drinking glasses I picked up at Goodwill. I thought Mr. Pishposh would like to list them in his store. He did. So they sold for $38. It was Superman and the Flash, and the glasses were by Pepsi. 
and a little stainless steel um, sugar bowl and lid by Tramontina sold for 18 now going over to Posh. Posh was pretty sad. I only had two. I couldn't believe it that whole week. I think we were just so busy with eBay that we didn't give much thought. I didn't give much thought to what places were not selling. Um, this was just a hat for 15 a Bourbon, Bourbon Street French Quarter hat. It's a little souvenir hat. And then this dress. The brand is Dainty Jewels. And let me see. Okay, here's the tag. I had found a Dainty Jewels dress. I think I sold it for like $80. Um, I had seen another reseller in a Poshmark group talk about her Dainty Jewels score at her Goodwill. And she showed her cart. She had like two carts. Like someone had donated like 100 Dainty Jewels dresses. And she happened to come upon them like when the store was doing 50% off women's clothing. Like it was amazing. Like she had this major score. And so I kind of learned about that brand and then I found one maybe the next day or that same day or something at Goodwill. And it turned out that the, the reseller I had read about was in my hometown. So she had, it was that same Goodwill and she had like been there before me and got like a hundred dainty jewels dresses. And so I had mentioned, I was like, Oh, I think it's the same store. I found one, you know, and she's like, Oh, how'd I miss it? And I think, well, they might have put it out later. And I said, honestly, I'm glad, you know, you got it. Because I didn't know that brand at the time. Like, I learned it from her, kind of. But I had not, I mean, not really. I had seen the dress, and it was very fancy looking. So I looked up the the name in the Goodwill, and I was like, oh, this is a good brand to get. But I think if I had seen like a hundred, I would have been totally overwhelmed with it. And I would have just been like, I don't know. And dresses weren't my thing. It was a couple of years ago. And I was just like, eh, I don't know. They, they were too, they're very flowy and romantic and all that kind of stuff. Everything I'm not. And this one doesn't quite fit their, their usual aesthetic. And so, um, it didn't sell for as much, so it just sold for $25, but I still kind of picked it up because I, I don't know, just the brand is kind of stuck in my head. Anyway, that is it for the week. Um, I was sitting here thinking that we possibly had a Mercari sale or two that I forgot to mention, but I will just pop those into the next video. So hope you guys had a good selling week. I, there will be another what sold video this week because I already am getting behind again. <laughs> so I will have later on this week, I will have another what sold of, of the actual last week's sales. So as usual, you know what to do. You leave me a comment down below about your best sale of either the week that we just talked about or another recent sale, whatever you feel like sharing and let me know how the reselling biz is going for you. We'll talk to you later.